fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. It was late afternoon of a day in 1867. The driver of the stagecoach, nearing Trinkle City, had no reason to fear a holdup. But suddenly... A fool joke or something? I'll ask the questions. Throw your guns down. On the other side. Your rifle, too. Your passenger, what's her name? Why, uh, I don't just rightly know. She's from back east, to heard. You're lying. Let's have her name or you'll taste lead. Don't you dare hurt the driver. My, my name is Naomi Courtright. That's her. Grab her. Look, Toto. They were shots. Look like outlaws still there, Kim. A woman screamed. Come on, Silver. Hurry up. I can't get this door open. There. You've got company. Get on your horse. Okay. Get ready to them two Al Hoops. Here come two more. Let them go for the moment, Toto. See if the young woman's hurt. No, you don't, mask man. This lady's been through enough. I'm going to protect her if I have to do it with my bare fists. Would we have driven those men away if we didn't want to help her? Well, I guess you're right. You don't act like an outlaw. Your mask, you're with those horrible men. Now don't be frightened. I want to help you. What happened? I, I don't understand it. First, those men demanded my name. Then they tried to abduct me. They were complete strangers. If I could think of some reason. Yep. As soon as I noticed she was Naomi Courtright, they tried to grab her. That's strange. Do you mind telling me why you were going to Trinco City? Not at all. I'm a school teacher. I'm replacing the present teacher they have there, a man named Craig Gordon. I see. Possibly Mr. Gordon doesn't want to be replaced. On the contrary, Mr. Gordon asked to be replaced. He's going to Europe for further study. Do you know him? No, I never heard of him until I was given this assignment. I'm all right. Mr. Gordon had nothing to do with this. He's just the nicest man you'd ever want to meet. You're from the East, Miss Courtright. Do you have any enemies there? None that I know of. You carry gold in stagecoach? No gold, no nothing, engine. Just a couple of boxes of provisions. Are you carrying anything valuable? I'm a school teacher. School teachers accumulate spiritual, not material wealth. I see. One more question. Can either of you describe these men? Well, I'm afraid I can't. I, I was too frightened. Well, I didn't get a good look at the other Umber, but the one who's holding the six gun on me was tall and dark. Oh, uh, by the way, he had a scar right across his forehead. Sounds like might be Dan Glick, came with me. Glick is wanted further south for a number of bank robberies. He may have come north where he isn't known. But why would a bank robber abduct me? I don't know, Miss Courtright. We'll try to find out. Driver, I'd suggest that you and Miss Courtright report this incident to the sheriff. Tonto, you accompany the stagecoach. Learn what you can in town. We'll meet later at the crossroads. I'm going to try and follow the men who stopped you. Trinko City. Reckon you're near me caught right. Why, yes, yes, I am. I'm Liz Powell. I run one of the best boarding houses in town. Don't let anybody tell you different. The professor wanted me to come and meet you. He said he had to send his apologies. Got all messed up packing his books and stuff, I guess. It's awfully nice of you to be here, Mrs. Powell. Well, not nice at all, just good business. Don't want you to stay anywhere else but my place. Here's your bag, miss. Well, that sure is some pretty traveling day. Thank you. I'll ask the driver to send it around. That lazy critter? You wouldn't see it again in a week. Come on, what are we waiting for? You go to see Sheriff, miss. Sheriff, what about? A little trouble we run into, Liz. I'm going to report it pronto. What happened? I'll tell you about it as we walk along. 
After riding a considerable distance away from the stagecoach, the two outlaws drew rein to discuss the situation. Well, you sure messed that up, Devlin. What do you mean I messed it up? You were mighty anxious to get away. You should have shot her while you had the chance. Look, the boss said abductor. He didn't say shooter, Glick. There's no use arguing. What do we do now? Well, it'll be dark soon. We can call on the boss. Better go back to town separately so as not to arouse suspicion. Don't you think one of us better nose around town, see what they intend to do about the stagecoach holdup? That's a good idea. You do that, Devlin. The driver might have recognized this. Yeah. Get going. On your feet. What do you want, masked man? Why did you try to abduct Naomi Courtright? I never heard of her. Maybe a few days in jail will refresh your memory. A masked man taking me to jail? That's a bluff if I ever heard one. You'll find out soon enough. All right, let's go. Hold it, Glick. Let me see you from Crossroad, Commissary. What did you learn in town, Tonto? Chico City Bank had much gold dust in vault. Now, that would explain Glick's presence. But what has that to do with the girl? He won't talk. Then maybe protect somebody. That's likely, Tonto. Glick and his pal may be working for someone. Why do you think that, Commissary? If they were working alone, they would have no reason to ask Naomi Courtright her name. Keep him covered, Tonto. I want you to take Glick into town. I'll write a note to the sheriff. Where is Naomi staying? Her taking the boarding house by a lady named Mrs. Powell. I'm going to Mrs. Powell's. With the other outlaw at large, Naomi may still be in danger. You go now. Tonto had realized that he could not take his prisoner through town without a commotion. He was surprised and pleased, therefore, when, at the edge of town, he saw the sheriff riding toward him. He turned his prisoner and the Lone Ranger's note over to the sheriff. I've heard about this Glick. Got some reward notices on him. I've also heard about the man who wrote this note. Didn't know either of them were operating in my territory. Well, you'll get nothing from me. Maybe you'll change your mind after you've been in a cell for a few days on short rations. Tonto saw Glick nod to a man nearby. Suspecting that this might be Glick's accomplice, Tonto resolved to trail him. While Tonto followed, Devlin entered an apparently deserted house in Trinco City. Ah, Mr. Devlin. Where have you been? Where's Glick? Glick's in jail. What? I was on my way over here and I saw the sheriff and an Indian taking him in. Glick in jail? Did anyone follow you here? No. Sit down. An Indian? Was he one of the men who prevented the abduction? Yeah. I guess you know we messed that up then, eh? Of course I know. I saw the woman when she arrived. Why didn't you shoot her? Well, I, I remember you once saying that brain over brawn... Was... Brain over brawn and firearms. Quite right, Mr. Devlin. But there are exceptions to the rule. Exceptions? How are we to know about exceptions? You told us to get the girl without running into any trouble. Well, we ran into trouble. Tell me, why did you want us to get the girl? A fair question, Mr. Devlin. I shall tell you. A few years ago, I was a professor at an Eastern college. I was brilliant. So brilliant that I resented having to drum commonplace facts into the doltish minds of the student body. One day, I was interrupted in my work by one of these students. She did an unpardonable thing. All my life, I had hated clumsiness. A stupid woman spilled ink all over my accounting ledger in which I was writing. I lost my temper and struck her. There was an inquiry. 
It was discovered that I had embezzled school funds. Had them for years, in fact. It was sort of a hobby. Far more exciting than the routine teaching, because I had to match my wits against experts. When it all came out, of course, I was dismissed. I tried unsuccessfully to find another position. Then came West. Since I was already branded a criminal, I decided to turn to a life of crime. I made my plans with care and changed my name to Craig Gordon. I forged degrees from a European university. Then I decided where my first crime was to take place. A prosperous community with a sound basis for its financial wealth. And the rest you know, Mr. Devlin. How I accepted the menial position of teacher at the grammar school. How I crawled and humbled myself in order to gain the confidence of the town's leading citizens and their dreary little brats. How, meanwhile, I contacted you and Mr. Glick and acquired, under a false name, this abandoned house so conveniently close to the bank. <laughs> that was a smart trick, Professor. And now, Mr. Devlin, you should be able to give me the reason for my disposing of Miss Cartwright. No, I'm not sure that I do. Unless... Miss Cartwright is the stupid young woman I struck. You saw her this afternoon. I did. And the jig's up. No, the jig is not up. She didn't see me. If she had, I would have been discredited. But of all the school teachers, they had to send her. Yes. Quite an unfortunate coincidence. Maybe you shouldn't have asked for a replacement. Ah, vital element of my plan. You see, I've already established the fact that I'm leaving Twinkle City. After the robbery, I'll, um, I'll be able to go without even arousing the slightest suspicion. But for the short time that I'll be here, I must avoid having Miss Cartwright see me. For if she does, it will prove most unfortunate for her. What about Glick? Well, there's no cause for alarm. Mr. Glick won't talk. There's too much money involved. But the question arises, however, who are the masked man and the Indian? The masked man? Yes. I heard a few people say the girl was saved by a masked man and an Indian. Whatever the masked man's motives, his involvement may work in our favor. Uh, a word or two dropped here and there after the robbery, and the suspicion will fall on him and his Indian companion. And another thing, the sheriff will never expect a robbery with Glick in jail. You intend to pull the job right away then, Professor, huh? The bank is ripe for plucking, Mr. Devlin. Its vault now contains $250,000 in gold dust. A quarter of a million. We'll be able to live on Easy Street the rest of our lives, eh? When do we start? Let me see. The tunnel is now two feet beneath the floor, the bank vault. Shouldn't take you more than an hour to break through. I can do that easy. You got the blasting powder all set? It's over there. And the fuse? Got it. Seven o'clock, Mr. Devlin. Must be dark outside. Complete the tunneling. We'll enter the vault at nine o'clock tonight. You're coming, Professor? No, I have to finish packing my things. But I'll return in ample time for the breakthrough. Oh, I just thought of something, Professor. If the masked man and the Indian get too nosy, we can trap them, slug them, put them in the tunnel. When the bank blows up, they'll be found there dead. The sheriff will figure they tried to rob the bank and were unsuccessful. Huh? An excellent idea, Mr. Devlin. How clever of you to have thought of it. Yes, an excellent idea. A masked man and an Indian to keep you company. Keeping to the back streets, the Lone Ranger went to Mrs. Powell's rooming house. The shade to Naomi's room being up, he tapped on the window and gained admittance. He questioned her exhaustively, seeking some clue to her attempted abduction. You're certain you didn't recognize anyone in town this afternoon? No one. And you or your family have no connection with anyone in the banking business? Do you think Glick will say anything? We may eventually. Meanwhile, his accomplice is at large, a danger to you and a menace to the community. We need to take Glick to jail. See man nod to him. Follow him to deserted house. Deserted house? That sounds like a hideout. But this place not look like hideout. That's strange. Where is this house? Across alley from bank. Near the bank. We'd better go there and investigate. You wear disguise, Kimisani? Yes, Tato, I should. There's no telling what we may encounter. I'll be out in a moment. Tato may have found the outlaw's hideout. Is there anything I can do? The West is growing, Naomi. It needs more teachers of your caliber to run its new schools. More will come out when they learn they can settle here in safety. So just be careful till we learn more about this. I'll do whatever you say. Good. Who is it? It's Liz. Liz Powell. Well, what do you want? Well, I want to come in, of course. Well, just a moment. Well, Saffron Bearcats, 
You'd think there was somebody still after you, the way you're barricading yourself in here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still a little upset, I suppose. Oh, shucks, woman. Don't let these men folks upset you. No telling what those hoot owls were doing this morning, but whatever it was, it was a mistake. What? Who'd want to harm a pretty little bird like you? I can't imagine who would. Just wanted to tell you I'm going up the way a piece to visit a friend, in case you need anything. No, no, thanks. I'm fine. Have you seen the professor yet? No, I haven't. Well, that's funny. It's getting late and he's leaving town tonight. Oh? Well, I have a lot of things to talk over with him before he leaves. About the children's studies and his classes and... Well, if he ain't shown up by now, maybe you better go over and see him yourself. Sounds kind of important like to me. Well, I... I don't know. I... What's eating your child? You're not afraid of a broken down professor, are you? No, of course not. I haven't even met him yet. Well, then you run over and see him yourself. You know how professors are. They're all attached. Perhaps he's forgotten all about you. Does he live near here? Yes, just two doors down, little brown house that's back in the road. Well, I don't suppose there'd be any harm in that. Well, of course not. Well, I gotta be going. I'll see you later. Professor Gordon? Yes, who is it? I I'm the new teacher, Professor, Naomi Courtright. Uh, I'm Miss Courtright. Come in, please. Professor Gordon? Forgive me, Miss Cartwright, but I'm still dressing. I'll be out in a moment. Well, perhaps I should come back at another time. Not at all, my dear. As a matter of fact, I was just getting ready to pay you a visit before I left. Oh, well, I... I thought you'd forgotten about me. Uh, forgotten you? <laughs> Never. Uh, there's so much we must talk about before I go. Well, that's why I came over here, Professor Gordon. I, I'm sorry I couldn't have spent more time learning how you teach your pupils. Uh, yes, it is unfortunate, but... Uh, my traveling schedule suddenly changed, and I couldn't arrange it. Uh, oh, uh, I heard you experienced a rather frightful mishap arriving in, in Trinco City. Yes, it was terrible. But a masked man helped me. In fact, his Indian friend thinks he's located the outlaw's hideout near the bank. Their hideout? Well, uh, perhaps we should notify the sheriff. Oh, I think the masked man would do so if he thought it necessary. I feel a little uneasy over that pair. They sound like outlaws themselves. Oh, no, Professor, they're good. Why? Why, they're no more outlaws than, than you. Aren't they, Miss Courtright? Why, why, you're not Professor Gordon, you're... you're... <clears throat> A lot of good of it, do you, now that you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto silently examine the abandoned house. It certainly seems like a deserted house, Tonto. Possibly he came through here to cover his tracks. Kim Asabi. I'll be back soon. They left the candle burning. Go up and close the panel. We'll surprise them. All right, reach. Man, me trail from jail. Him friend of Glick. Keep him covered, amigo, while I see where this tunnel goes. Just as I think. This tunnel goes beneath the bank. Already this gringo have saw his way through the floor into the bank. Are you the one who helped Glick try to kidnap Miss Courtright? I don't know anybody by the name of Glick. I think you lie. I think also you work for someone else besides Senor Glick. I don't know what you're talking about. Take him to the sheriff. I will remain here in case another one show up. He's here, my friend. We're glad to see you, Professor. Drop your guns, both of you. Or Miss Cartwright gets a bullet in the head. Collect the firearms. He's sure a nosy Mexican. His curiosity will be short-lived. For the time being, Mr. Devlin, tie them up. Get over on the floor. You, Indian, get over there. Two bags of gold dust and plenty more where they came from. That blasting powder at the hinges of the vault door sure did the trick. I used so little, it hardly made a sound. Put them in the buckboard, Mr. Devlin. You will not get away with it, Senor Professor. You think not, my friend? Then perhaps you don't know how carefully I have planned. There are many things that you have overlooked. Your accomplice, Gleek, for one. He is in jail. Sooner or later, he may talk. Stay where you are, Indian. Now, as for Mr. Glick, he's a minor problem. 
Tomorrow, when the robbery is discovered, the entire town will flock over to the bank. In the meantime, I'll slip quietly over to the jail. When the sheriff returns, he'll find Glick dead, shot from the window of his prison cell. What about this tunnel? They will surely find it. And if they do, they'll find the bodies of a Mexican and an Indian. To all appearances, double-crossed by the rest of the gang. Two good reasons to throw the sheriff off my trail. What you gonna do about Miss Cordwright? She'll be taken down to the river and drowned. Her body will be weighted with stones. So, you will stop at nothing, eh, senor? Absolutely nothing. You have another accomplice. If uh, he is caught... I have overlooked nothing. I'll pick up the rest of the gold. That'll be fine, Mr. Devlin. Devlin, look out! <laughs> Time is scored right, Tonto. Then we'll see about Devlin. Put him in the back cell. If you need more evidence, Sheriff, I'm sure Devlin will be glad to provide it. It should be enough to jail a professor for years. A school teacher turning out to be a dead blame crook trying to rob the bank. I don't understand it. His loss is Trinco City's gain. You have a fine new schoolmistress to replace him. That's right. And happy we are to have you too, Miss Courtright. The city will certainly be a lot better off for the change. But can you imagine all this going on right before my very eyes without me knowing a thing about it? Why, if it hadn't been for the masked man, well, he's gone. I wonder who he is. I can tell you that, Miss Courtright. He's the Lone Ranger. Oh, Silver! Oh!